you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, ain't no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. to listen to the sick podcast cf montreal talk it's the chance it's the chance let's stop the goal absolutely incredible camera porter 
delivers the goal. It's a Montoya impact into the CONCACAF Champions League semi-final. The sickest CF Montreal podcast. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. Playground, your premier gaming destination. It's gonna be sick. Marinero, the Sick Podcast, and welcome. Welcome to the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk. We're going to go in English, but if he says a few words, actually a few sentences, even if he spends half the podcast en français, ça me dérange pas du tout, not at all. We have some breaking news. Let's bring it up. I actually broke it uh, just before 12, I think it was at around 12.36 or 12.38 p.m. earlier today. Congrats to midfielders Mateo Scavoni and Alessandro Biello. Both will sign contracts with CF Montreal. Scavoni, who was last with the Primavera team of Bologna, will be transferred to CF Montreal and then loaned out this season to Forge FC of the Canadian Premier League. Meanwhile, Biello will stay with the big team with CF Montreal this season, and I'm sure we'll uh, probably get to see him play some games with the reserve team. Joining me right now, without further ado, let's bring him in. Nilton George of Couscous, Piri Piri, Can Football Club, and everyone else you can think of. Every single podcast in the world he does because <laughs> they give him a $5,000 appearance fee yeah. per episode. So it's starting Pesos. to rack up the dollars there. How are you? Come on, Saba. <laughs> oh, wow. I hope it was true. <laughs> not not bad, not bad. How's it going, Tony? So you're breaking news very, right very now? well. Uh, so, well, yeah. Uh, so you listen. Why don't uh, Why don't you give me your thoughts? Uh, the uh, The players were there. There are actually several academy players uh, who joined CF Montreal uh, in their training camp when they started mm -hmm. off, and they were on their way to Arizona. If you remember correctly, uh, there was uh, Alessandro Biello. There was um, Gael de Montigny. Uh, there was Sergei Kozlovsky. Uh, there was uh, Jesse Saputo. Uh, there was Judwalin Michel. I'm going off the top of my head here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There was uh, Judwalin Michel. Uh, there was uh, um, uh, Gael Fotsing. Um, uh, was it not? Uh, was, was, was Fotsing not there? Yes, Fotsing was there, I believe. Yes. Uh, who else was there? I think it's pretty much. I think it's pretty much. Um... It was, we were like... Emrick Futsing, by the way, pardon me. Uh, Emrick Futsing, pardon me. I think the last time that the uh, CF uh, Montreal announced uh, some new uh, pro contract was way back, I think, year 2020, December, when they uh, they announced uh, Chandrea, Asu, uh, Zouir, Saliba. So, so they were there like three years since uh, any uh, young from the academy that signed with, with the, the, the pro club. So they were due. Um, I was a little bit surprised to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to knew that Schiavone was back from Italy. Uh, it, was, it was pretty quick that this change of mind. When he left Montreal, he was probably thinking that the, uh, his future was in Italy. So going back from uh, only for uh, for a year, it's a big change for him. But uh, I think um, Divayo really liked him at the time. I think Divayo saw something in him and said, "Hey, you know what? Boom! And this kid's got an Italian passport. Let's get him down." Yeah. But you know, there's I'm telling you, it's um, even though there's an alliance there, and obviously uh, CF Montreal and Bologna have the same owner. When you deal with academies in Europe, there's a lot of crazy things that happen, let me tell you. And you can have an Italian passport all you want. But if you're coming from Canada, for them, you're Canadian. And you know what that means? You start at the bottom. And you know what yeah. that means? Uh, you don't work your way up as fast as an Italian kid would. <laughs> or, or it's a new game. Eh? But it will, it will be. Or wherever you're going to play. Be interesting to to uh, to to watch what kind of position he will play for four will be a midfielder will be because the four don't play as the same uh, tactical system as Montreal they play a more traditional four three three with uh, a triangle in the midfield will he occupied uh, a midfield and like an eight or ten uh, role or maybe you will try to use him as a right back it will be interesting to see what kind of uh, minutes. 
that Forge will give him at uh, the CPL. I'll tell you what I like about uh, Matteo Scavoni. First of all, he's a, he's a fine young man. Uh, so I've, you know, Matteo uh, grew up playing in Lachine. Uh, and uh, he's a 2005, so on is my youngest. So uh, they had uh, quite a few battles over the years before he entered the academy, of course, uh, uh, the CF Montreal Academy. Uh, Matteo was, was coached by um, his grandfather, the late Vito Scavoni, uh, who uh, oversaw in the last couple of uh, in the last couple of years oversaw the uh, Soccerplex Catalonia uh, complex. Um, unfortunately, um, Vito passed away several years ago. Uh, but uh, Vito was uh, was Matteo's coach, uh, and uh, he coached Matteo with uh, with uh, with um, uh, with Matteo's dad. So Matteo's dad, uh, Paolo, and uh, his dad, Vito, uh, were the coaches of uh, that Lachine club. And uh, he grew up as a 10. Uh, he was always one of the best 10s in the league, whether it was the Lac St. Louis League or, 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 um, or um, you know, was he, uh, I, I think actually it was, it was throughout the Lac St. Louis League. And then uh, he, um, he went to the Jutes Quebec, and for a reason that I still do not understand, uh, he was um, he was placed as a center back. Uh, yeah. Jalen Vilsain was on that team as well, who also used to play as a ten back in the day, and they placed him as a center back as well. Uh, anyway, uh, if they both would have played in the midfield, I I, I think we would have won the Jutes Quebec that year. But anyway, that's another story for another day. But. He's a very versatile player, so he can play center back. Uh, his preferred position is the position of number 10, okay? But he can play anywhere in the midfield. Uh, he can play as an 8. He can play as a 6. I've seen him play as a 5 before. Um, I don't think he's a 5 nowadays, and I, I'm not so sure it would be one of his preferred positions. When he went to Italy at one point, he had started off in the central midfield. And then uh, he got himself in at right back or right wing back. He did not play much in the last year uh, that he was at Bologna. In his first year, he played quite a bit in the first couple of months that he was there. Uh, then after that, I'm not so sure if there was an injury, but uh, he went from the U19 Primavera team down to the U18 team. Uh, like I said, there was an injury there in between. This year, he was back for his second year with the Primavera team. And uh, only played a couple of minutes all season in probably about 14 or 15 games. He probably played five minutes or so. Uh, I think he played a half of a cup game, if memory serves me well. But uh, once again, uh, there's a lot of strange things that happen in Europe. And when you come back to Canada, you come back to North America, things are done a little bit differently. And, uh, and I think the players are given much more of a fair shake, whereas in Europe, uh, very, very strange things happen, and uh, Canadians usually end up getting the short end of the stick. So he's a, he's a fine young man. He works hard. He's very disciplined. He's very humble, comes from a very good family. He's a versatile player, and um, the fact that he's loaned out to Forge FC, I'm not going to lie. Like, I saw this one coming from a mile away. Uh, we know that uh, yeah. his agent and Forge FC, there's a connection there that if uh, – you know, it's it's easier to open a door there than it would be somewhere else. Uh, it, it serves him well. He's going to go there. Uh, he's going to have a chance to prove himself. Like I said, the coach is going to end up getting a, a player who can play several positions. He's going to end up getting a player who's very coachable, uh, who wants to learn, who wants to get better. So, you know, <clears> I'd, rather, I'd rather him be there than him be here and never play. And yeah, yeah, that's right. Know, and, 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 and for the and that for the for the player, it's a good place to learn too, because as you said, they have some connection. They know the coach. They know the league. And Montreal needs to step up because there's some competition right now. You know, we saw some players from Montreal from the uh, reserve team that has signed with the uh, MLS Pro uh, team. Some uh, there maybe two and three down the last couple of uh, of weeks. So there's competition. But Montreal needs to set up and don't wait till the last moment to give some contracts. I think that 
we won't wait another three years to see other other contracts. A guy like uh, the uh, the defender, uh, as the Sergei name is, exactly, he's gonna be one of the next. I know that uh, Olivier Ronal likes him very much. I think that the goalkeeper too, it's pretty agile and uh, he has a shape that mm, uh, could could uh, could do some difference on the field. So he's, he could be one of those. And don't forget that right now, uh, the uh, MLS clubs don't have to put them on the roster. They can give them, Correct. since two since years, they can give them some pro contracts without put them on the uh, on the roster. So right now, Bielo will be occupied some of those supplementers place, but they don't yes. need to if they don't want to. Yeah, off salary cap. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought up uh, Kozlovsky. Uh, with all due respect to all the academy players, uh, he's the guy that I think I have as the number one prospect in the academy. Uh, a left-footed center back, there's, uh, there's uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, uh, how much uh, he's going to grow because we know that center back, uh, there's not too many Carnavaros in this world that uh, that if you're not <laughs> tall, you can end up having a very, very good career. Uh, if he doesn't grow, you're going to end up seeing him play as a, as a, as a left back. Um, right. But uh, if he does, he'll continue to be, he has, um, he has incredible soccer smarts. He has a maturity uh, to his game, which is uh, unreal. Uh, he's got a rocket of a shot. Um, he, he reads the game extremely well. I like him a lot. Um, and so you talked about, uh, you know, so he'll he'll be the next one to sign. I would, well, the Jude Willem Michel will be, mm -hmm. I think, the next one to sign. I think he'll be the number three on this staff, uh, goalkeeper staff, next season with CF Montreal. But Sergey is going to sign. It's not going to be too long, that's for sure. Uh, as for Alessandro Biello, you just talked about it. There's competition, right? Uh, the young man is going to be 18 years old. And uh, once you're 18, boom, you can go wherever you want. Uh, their biggest nightmare would have been not signing him. And uh, a Biello, who is the son of a club legend, signing somewhere else. And let's be honest, you'd have to think that every NCAA school in the world would have loved first, to have had him. Um, so, so you know, he would have had an option there. Uh, I'm sure contacts in the soccer world are not a problem. He would have ended up somewhere else if they were not going to sign him. Uh, so they right. went out and uh, and they signed him. Now, I don't see no, it, him it's playing not, very much. Right now, no, no. It's not a gift that the no. club is, is, is giving him a pro contract. He's been the captain of the uh, of, uh, of young Canadian teams. Uh, on tournaments, he'd been one of the leaders, and when he when he plays, we, we we can spot fast that he's one of those players like the the, the tempo. The, the, he likes to to talk a lot to the players. He will be one day pro. What kind of pro? He, it, it's not the same as his father. He's, he's not an attacking option. He's more a defensive one, on, the, on a, a, like a modern number six player. But he needs some minutes. That's the key. Those minutes on the League One will be enough for him. We'll see if, if uh, after a couple of weeks or months, it, you see that uh, maybe it's it's not the place to give him some minutes. They have the option to loan him somewhere in the CPL uh, in, the, in the season. That's not a problem. But the key, the, the key thing for those two players is to have minutes. If Skevoni don't have minutes with Ford, they need to find those minutes elsewhere. Yeah. And uh, there is going to have some competition in the team. There we have Zuriel there. We have Saliba. We have all those players, all those midfields occupying yeah. maybe the same role. Not 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 exactly the same role, but the same spot. Yeah. That's a lot of people for those, those spots. Eventually, they need to clean and a spot rapidly which players you need to be focused on and give those yeah. opportunities. So I'll tell you, you know, uh, I, I think Alessandro really opened a lot of eyes with um, with uh, Canada at the CONCACAF U20, okay? <laughs> now, uh, he uh, he played well, okay? Uh, scored a big goal, uh, captain the, the team for a game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, for me, his greatest attribute always has been um, his, uh, his personality on the field. Uh, he's very, very vocal. 
Uh, he's in the game all the time. It's a very, very good personality trait to have. Now, I believe uh, the decision was already taken that even if he wasn't going to be on that U-20 team or even if he wasn't going to play well, that you know there was going to be a pro contract coming for him, a homegrown deal. Uh, but at the same time, it kind of solidified everything, right? He played well, and I'm happy that he had the tournament that he had because let's be honest, uh, the U-17 World Cup was 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 probably something to forget, right? He he ends up getting a red card in game number one. He's suspended for the rest it of the happened. games, and it was not a good tournament for Canada, unfortunately. So he had a chance uh, to redeem himself, show what he can do, and I think he passed the test. I think he did really well. But, you know, two different players, although they mm -hmm. occupy the same position, uh, we've seen once again that Scavoni has played on the right side uh, with uh, Bologna in the past uh, couple of years. Um, but two different situations. Scavoni, once again, has not played a lot of games. He needs to play games like you talk about. But And I don't know this for a fact, but I think that in Olivier Renard's ideal world, he would rather have players stay here uh, and train with the first team, even if they're not going to play a lot, then maybe go somewhere else if you don't know whose hands you're putting them into. And because a lot of those other teams, when you go, there's like, okay, well, he's not our player. Exactly. He's their player, right? So, you know, exactly. and if you think about it, if you think about it, I understand the logic, right? Calculate the ratio of practices to games. So are you better off going to a lower level and playing X amount of games or X amount of minutes or practicing on average four times a week for seven months. Mm. There's a lot more practices to games. So I understand that logic too, right? You're, you're, you're going to get yeah. better practicing with higher caliber players. But once again, Scavoni needs to play. And I think he will play yeah. at Forge at the same time. It probably would have been better in a way if he would have gone to a weaker team because he would have played more. I mean, he's going to the the class of the CPL in the last five seasons. Uh, but um, once again, but eventually, the time, they, but again, the discussion about the MLS Pro team will will pop up eventually in a couple, maybe in two and three years, if the academy can produce substantial players on all positions. What are you talking about? Practicing and game time will be satisfied with the MLS pro team. Maybe in uh, three, four years ago, it wasn't the case. They don't have any as many players as, as possible to create that team. But practicing is one thing, but maybe a game, it's more, it's like five practice. You know that uh, you, 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 you're, you're, I'm sure that you know what Juventus just did with this is under 23 team that playing with C in Serie C. They are they are finding that gap that need to that gap between the academy and the pro team. The 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 loaning systems can satisfy some some uh, yes. some problems. Can 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 uh, as, as you say you are you are giving uh, a ticket and you wish that the lottery ticket that you're giving to us or somebody else will be satisfying because you don't know the system, you don't know the coach. When you loan that the coach can, can, can be changed in three months, eventually the team needs to win and not to develop players. It's, yeah. it, it's pretty tricky. It's pretty tricky. So they need, and yes. the big thing, it's the budget. The budget will eventually make the big decision. But if you if you have so many players that leaving the academy to go to MLS Pro in the next uh, on the other teams, maybe even they will need in, in a couple of years to do the same uh, as the other MLS teams. Yeah, and uh, listen, taking a page out of uh, the Real Madrids and the Atletico Madrids of this world, that that's what they do, right? As well, they play in third divisions, uh, their second team. So that's that's the way you do it. All right, okay. Um, you, you talked about congestion in the midfield, so let's talk about it, right? Uh, Matthew Schwanier, Nathan Saliba, Victor Wanyama, Samuel Piet. To a lesser degree, Iliadis. Um, so let's let's and now, of course, Biello. 
Schiavoni, Rida Zuir. So let's talk about it. Where are going to be the opportunities for these players going forward so that they could be in the fold next year and be able to get some action, some playing time? I know what I think is going to happen, but I'd like for you to tell me what you think is going to happen first. And hold on a second. Hold on a second. Why don't we do this? Let me write it down on a piece of paper what I think is going to happen. Okay. okay. To free up two spots for these players. Okay. Uh, in the midfield next year. And then you'll tell me. Um, and I'll flip over the page. Okay. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, okay. Well, one thing yeah. I hope, and I'm pretty sure it will happen next year, but I think it might happen this year. It's one year amount will be traded. If not, it will it will not be back next year. It, that's uh, that's obvious. But I think that something on um, MLS will put a panic button on and tr pull a trigger on a trade for Victor Wanyama. It will be one of those things that will happen. And if it doesn't happen, they will need to loan back against Zouir and maybe he won't be happy about that option. But if you want to develop that Zouir option without without being so um, problematic to Saliba and others, that one Yama need to go. One yeah. one other uh, one other easy one. It's Iliadis. Iliadis. I think that the contracts. This is the last year of his contract. It was a gamble, but that don't need to be. <laughs> Zoe out. I'm not sure that if he goes out, it will be his call. It will be like Pantemis at the end of the year going to the to the office of Renard and telling and asking him to leave. But I think it will be a mistake because we are as a potential to have to, to bring something that the others player, yeah, young player don't have. Zouir have that magical offensive touch and the defensive uh, capability of occupying those the, those spots those spots. So I hope that Zouir will be uh, patient enough to wait that those spots open for him. But uh, Nilton, you that is a guru on anything that is contract, and I think you have uh, more player contract details than the players themselves have. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think Zuir is in the final year of his contract next year and the year uh, this year, and the year after is a club option. Is it not? Do you have that? Because I, I remember I when they loaned him out. When they loaned him out, they loaned him out, but extended a couple of years. But I believe this year is the last year. Next year is a club option. Is that correct? Uh, let me check. I'll check. Uh, he, signed yeah. in, he, he signed in December uh, 2000, 2020, right? And, uh, no, no, but la remember last year when they loaned them out, they announced an extension at the same time. I'll check. When that. they loaned them that. out, they announced an extension. Okay. Anyway, so look. If, if if he's got this year and next year, he's here. But if he's got this year and next year's a club option, I'm not so sure they exercise it now. Out of the three yeah, you're players... Right, you're right. You're right. He's, he's, he's a guarantee. Uh, yeah, he was a guarantee 2024 and an option to 2025. It wasn't mentioned if it was a club option or... I believe uh, it's a club option. I'm I'm, I'm uh, ready to no, bet that it's a club uh, option. <laughs> I don't think they okay, give so, him an option to right. So Wanyama will not be back with this team next year. Iliadis, uh, you know, very unfortunately for him, it just it has not been a fit. Uh, and, and you know, I'm sure he'd love to get the playing time, and he'd probably tell you, well, if I got the playing time, I can show what I can do. But uh, there's some. But you don't think there. I mean it's going to be very hard to get Chouinier out of the lineup or a Piet out of the lineup or. You know, or or even a Saliba that they want to sell in an ideal world at the end of this year, or Max at the end of next year. Um, but Zuir, but Tony, I think but that Tony, that's the most Tony. interesting thing. And Nilton, tell me, Tony, do you don't do you don't think that Victor eventually will ask for a move in a couple of months next month? He won't he won't stay here without a guarantee because if if he 
if he finishes his contract in, 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 in winter, it will be very difficult for him to find another place. So it will be normal for him to go see right now, Ronald, to ask him the plan. Yeah, and, and, and Olivier will give him the plan. The plan that you, uh, it's the last year. He will ask for a trade or to give him a free pass to go eventually somewhere. This summer, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about that. Transfer. I don't know about that. Let's not forget when, you know, <laughs> when they spoke to him, when they spoke to him, I think he was contemplating retirement. Like I, you know, like I, I and uh, listen, I'm sure he's not happy to be on the bench, but at the same time, you know what? It's a golden he's, bench. <laughs> my God, you know, it's it's uh, he's, he's he's making a very good living just being there, I just understand. being part of the guys. And uh, I, I don't know what I look I, if I knew him personally, I can tell you what his ambition is and how motivated he is watching from afar. It looks like this thing is coming to an end. You know what I mean? But uh, hey, would he like to go with? Who doesn't want to go maybe on a team that has a chance of a championship? But listen, uh, most thought that this team was not going to make the playoffs. I mean, if the season ended today, they would. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, but it, but it's uh, soon. Sometimes there's a couple of injuries, an opportunity here and there. You get in, and You're right. I think he should have been in last game. I think Laurent Courtois, personally, I think he made a mistake on a couple of occasions. I think he made a mistake by not putting Wanyama in at halftime uh, and, and by putting Saliba in. I think once he did put Saliba in, he put him in way too advanced a position. I think that was a mistake too. He was better off, I think, putting Schwanier if he would have. Then I think he made another mistake by bringing in Jabang to help close out the game when they were down to 10 men instead of Wanyama. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But I think, you know, what's interesting is Zuir. What happened with the Zuir situation? Based on what I heard, when Renard took over, and he came in, and he went to watch an academy game. The first guy who caught his attention was Zuir. And Normal. he pushed for him, and, uh, and, and you know, he got him up there. And, um, and, you know, you mentioned something, right? He's got offensively, he's got something that, they both have their qualities, right? But he's got a notch above Saliba in terms of, in terms of those, um, offensive those flashes. Yeah, those okay. flashes. That, yeah. Saliba's got a very good shot, but I think Zuir's shot is even a notch above. Zuir he packs a, 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 a shot that sometimes can 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 do a little bit of movement on you. Okay, uh, Saliba does have a laser, but Zuir's shot has a little something else. Um, He's, um, they both protect the ball well. They're both strong. Saliba has a, a certain composure to his game that maybe, maybe Zawir doesn't have. I mean, it's, it's debatable. But what happened here that he wasn't able to get in last year? Saliba was the preferred midfielder. He hasn't been able to get in this year again. What happened? Would Zuir because last year when they said go to the USL and show us what you can do, he answered the bell big time. He was mm -hmm. excellent, excellent in the USL. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, I I think out of the three names that we mentioned, there's still a window for Zuir, but I think that window's closing. I think that no, one, I'm not. I'm not sure about. I, I. I. know. I heard some. Some things about Zoir. Maybe he's. He's. He's no such. He, he needs some patience a little bit more because he wants everything right now, and then it's normal. Kids want things right now, but he needs maybe to look at like a Matthew Schwania, who took some time to develop, uh, because Schwania they didn't. Didn't we didn't see that kind of midfield coming from Shwanya, it took some time. And when you see Zouir, Saliba, those two kids could be one the the cornerstone of the, that midfield. They're, they're perfectly uh, a mix of midfield. One may be a little bit more strategic uh, passing vision. The other have more the confidence to take that shot. They could be some interesting midfielders, at least at MLS level eventually if they develop they can be a little bit more 
but Zohir need to take that time. He's not the only. He's not. He's not the first kid that when he's on the on his in his on his team don't uh, be the uh, the uh, the starter right away. They need time. He need to develop. They don't. They, they get having all the pressure of performing. It will be tough for him. So maybe yes, it's frustrating because he proved himself on the USL level. Eventually, he will have that that window will open. Eventually, Piet will go to Copa America if they qualify, and they will need some time. Eventually, they will play against CPL and the Canadian Championship. Eventually, it will it will give that that uh, that call to Laurent Courtois that that maybe it will it will be forced to take out a guy like Piet and put Zouir on that. That he needs to be patient. When the window open, go for it. I know maybe it's easier for us to tell, but he has time, man. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. he, he knows that the MLS could be uh, a tremplin for something else. So, yes. yeah, I understand that maybe at the end of the year, he will do uh, like James Pantemis and ask for... Uh, for, for a trade to, to be free, but it's not the same situation because a, go, a goalkeeper doesn't have that opportunities and those windows. Midfield, he will have it. Eventually, maybe even Laurent Courtois will change his tactics. He will need three midfielders. We never know. So it's yeah. only the beginning of the season. And what it, what he it needs to be more focusing on, it's when, he, when the coach had the option between Victor Wanyama and himself, the coach went to, to, to Zouir. So mm, it, it, it eventually, I think that in the next couple of months, it will add that window to prove uh, the, organiz the organization that is the guy to uh, to put the uh, the uh, the uh, the change on. I, I hope so. I uh, you know what I like about him? He's a gamer. He he's a gamer. He uh, uh, he fights on the field a lot, big time. Uh, just you know, a thought. Uh, I was just I. I, I Last couple of minutes here, I'm thinking about Scavoni, who we talked about. I played the right side with Bologna in the last year, but that could be an opportunity for him as well. Like, uh, how long, how much longer do you think Lassie Lapolainen, uh, who's out right now with an injury, is going to be on CF Montreal? Is he in their long term plans? And if he's not a right wing back after Juan, you have who? Uh, right now, the depth chart will show will tell us that it's grants and duty, <laughs> but Correct. the real, the, but but the real answer it's. But that's it's hold on a sister. second. It's, but that's it's, a, yeah, it's, that, that's a very winnable spot for a guy like. So we talked about all the congestion in midfield, and we know that uh, a huge majority of the time, when players come out of the academy and make the jump, mm. they're midfielders. Right, right. That's, so there, and there, that's there the tends problem. to be a lot of <laughs> there tends to be a lot of congestion in that spot. If I'm Scavoni, if my coach plays me in the CPL at right wing back, it, it's 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 not anything to get dejected about because after Juan, the battle is going to be with Grace and Duty. There's not a lot of congestion there. It's a winnable battle. Because, well, it, it, listen, if Lapalainen, I don't think Lapalainen is going to be in the long-term plans of the team. I don't think so. On the left side, you have Lasseter and you have uh, Raheem Edwards. On the right side right now, you have Juan, you have Duty. Some will say that they could put Schwanier there, but Schwanier is a middle-of-the-park player. He's a jack-of-all-trades. Some yeah. will say maybe master of none. Uh, because, uh, no. you know, but I think he's a middle-of-the-park uh, player. He's an eight. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, he is. It, yeah, but, but 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 as you say, if if the club if the club has a specific need for a specific game, he could he could go give those minutes. But, uh, yes, the problem that we don't have the... Uh, I, I was... For, at first, I was, uh, I was pretty um, surprised by the... Uh, the option not giving to uh, Zachary Borgia on the right side because beneath Royan, you don't have that wing back, that really true wing back style on the right side. Yes, maybe you have Lasseter that can play and that that role eventually less Lapalanin, but those those 
those money, those dollars given to Lassie will give, will put Milton, somewhere else. Milton, yeah, Milton Ruan is very good. Milton Ruan is very good. He's not, he's not just good. I like his personality because Montreal need that kind of, uh, like we say in, in French, he's, he, 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 he know he's tricky. He's tricky. When he's yes. one of those are in, in Italian. We see, what, what's the word in, what's the word in uh, Portuguese? Oh boy, I'm on top of my mind. For Malay, I'll tell you what it is in uh, Italian. Uh, it's furbo, furbo, c'è una furbizia. And you know who has that? You know who's furbo? Who has la furbizia? Cocaro. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Cocaro. Uh, uh, yeah, malin, cocaro. Yeah, malin. Yeah. And, and Montreal, it's too clean of a and 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 we we saw that last year. One of those dirty players was 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 Schwanier, and that's it. And Juan bring that 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 kind of uh, of nasty play who, who's tricky with the with the referee who plays with the mental of the opposite. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, did Juan you see, was, nope. was a pretty upgrade to that team. Did yeah. you see last game? I'm there was a long cross for Juan. He just made the ball sit on his foot and he advanced with hey. it. Hey, it's a know, samba time. football. Joga hey, that's exactly. It's it's Brazilian feet. He has Brazilian feet. You can say he's a Brazilian with Brazilian feet. All right, okay. Uh, so uh, speaking of Cocaro, uh, CF Montreal practiced today, yesterday as well. They've been at Medi Victor. Uh, we know that they're going to be off, of course, on the weekend because uh, 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 the Canadians men's national team will be playing. It's an uh, international break. Uh, versus Trinidad and Tobago. And then CF Montreal is going to be back on the 30th. Uh, they're going to be in Washington visiting D.C. United. Uh, Cocaro was not at practice yesterday. He was at practice today, and he was on his own, apart from the team. Uh, so uh, what I can tell you is uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, there was a little injury last game. Uh, but uh, he'll be fine. He'll be fine, and he'll be re ready to go versus DC United. And you know why he was not at practice yesterday? No, go ahead. He was in Argentina, going to just uh, to settle a few affairs, and uh, okay. so he's back. It's okay. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's okay. But but I hope it won't be that that kind of story every week because it seems that since the beginning of the season, Cocao has a little. Uh, there's a struggle physically. Uh, he's miss. He, he, he can complete any game. He's like he, one time it was more. It was a knee. Something else was a, in the a, 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 like a hip problem. I hope it's, you know it's only a bad you know why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's giving he a lot fouls. physically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he draws he fouls. Creates. Yeah, hey, sometimes he, he creates those fouls too. <laughs> he goes looking for fouls. Like like Messi just outside the box, you touch him, he's going down because he knows his free kick is going in, right? But uh, Cocado, it's it's he's not putting in the free kicks, but he 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 looks for fouls, he creates fouls, he draws fouls. We talked to him about him being malin. Il est malin. Yeah, he's, he's uh, one of them. The goal, yeah, he's one of them. the foul, the foul, the last game, the first one. Uh, his tenacity to get back in the play, to not give up. On the second one, the beautiful ball by Alvarez, uh, Cocaro looked for that foul. Yeah. He drew that foul. He was easily going down, hoping to get the PK, and he got it. So he deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, right. He's very smart. Yeah. Very, very smart. We were yeah, the, the the those seasons before we loved those players who had some intensity, but without any uh, intention. Not with Kokaro, that intensity means something. Is he, like you say, he's looking for falls. They looking to win to win some minutes. He's doing the intensity and the work on field, but for for a specific re re reason. And he could be a good influence for those kids. Like a kid like Vilsain looking. At Kokaro, he will learn. He will learn oh, yeah. a lot from it. A lot, a lot, a lot. He's going to learn a lot from Martinez too. You'll learn a lot from Martinez too. There's a there's a lot of guys there you can learn from. Kokaro is one because of one aspect of what he brings. Martinez is another. All right, okay. Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, when I hosted uh, the Sick Podcast CF Montreal Talk on Monday, en français avec. 
Patrice Bernier et Ali Gerba. Uh, we talked about the Canadians men's national team and their game coming up. And I asked them, uh, and I asked Ali, Patrice had been gone at that point. I said, Ali, who do you think Mauro Biello will name as his captain? Uh, we know that once upon a time, it used to be Atiba Hutchinson. Uh, once upon a time, I believe it was Milan Borian. Milan's no longer with the team. Who's going to be the captain for this big game coming up against Trinidad and Tobago? And Ali said, well, I'll tell you this. I wouldn't give it to Alfonso Davies. Mm. And then he said, um, I would give it to Jonathan David before I give it to Davies. And then he said he might take the you know easy way out and give it to Cripple. And I said, there's one guy on the team to give it to. One. It's not complicated. There's only one. It's Ustakio. Yeah. And we're hearing that it will be Steven Ustakio. Your thoughts? I, I think it's an easy call. It's a, it's a no-brainer. First, he's a, he's a regular. A midfielder who dedicates the game. He he, he don't he, he isn't afraid of of talking to the media. Davies, we saw when he wins, he has a positive attitude. When he's losing, it's pretty more complicated. He have that pressure to perform, be the face of the team. And that's a little bit too much. And he's young, so yeah, Ustakio, I think he has the that uh, European European experience with a big club doing some uh, big tournaments. So I think with his age, it will be an easy call. Crepo is not a bad idea. I think maybe uh, some from the, um, uh, maybe a call from uh, champ droit, là, si on veut, champ gauche, je voudrais dire, uh, a guy like Alistair Johnson could be more a guy of, a, a type of guy to be a leader than Davies. Or maybe even a Kyle Lahren could be that kind of guy. But maybe the, the, uh, the, th those uh, those stories way back when he was what to Orlando, it may be not a good thing to give him uh, the, the 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 captain option. But yeah, Eustachio, he will be uh, an easy call, a good call, and he has the respect of all the team around him. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was a good. It, it's not confirmed now, but I think that Morobiello made the a perfect choice. Well, Wellington via Facebook Live says, give it to Samuel Piet. And Ali had said that originally as well. And I said, you you can't. He's, chances are he's not going to be a starter. You can't. And look, I'm going to say this. Never mind the next game versus Trinidad and Tobago. I believe that Steven Zustakio is going to captain Canada until the through the World Cup. I think so. He, I, and, and that's a good idea. He's in his mid-20s. That... He's a starter. Yeah, right. Yeah, he right. plays on a very big club in very big games. You, unless something crazy happens, you no need that leader until 2026. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And and then and and that didn't and it's not a, a, a case of taking away something from Davis. Davis will still be and will be until the end of his career the face of that of that team. It's okay, it's normal. Uh, but the arm barn, it's something else. And giving the to the media and to the public uh, uh, another face something more uh, more as a leadership not the not the one who's there to make the goals i think it's a good idea and uh, stacky will do a, a good job and and you see when he's not playing the team is not the same and uh, as a performance and uh, the way they play they uh, you see that uh, steven stacky is one of those leaders on that team yeah and i think you're right about that as there's enough pressure on Davies and David to contribute offensively for the Canadians men's national team. They yeah. don't need the extra pressure of the armband. They no, don't. Because if, As yeah, for right, Stacchio, because, I think whether yeah. he has the armband or he doesn't, he's going to play the same way. I don't think he's going to feel the added pressure. Of it. And he will be able to talk a little bit more as a midfielder, as a veteran. If something goes wrong, he can talk to those players and to the media. If the, uh, uh, let's say that 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 we don't qualify to to Copa America, it will be a disaster. But let's say we don't. Imagine Alfonso Davies doing those interviews. We lo we lose that game one zero, and Davies uh, one of those who supposed to put that goal. Don't put that goal and you have to put him on the interview. It's way too much pressure on that guy. And you see that pressure 
for now uh, on this stage of his career maybe he's not that good with pressure it's not because he, he, he doesn't perform uh it's it, not that that he's, he's the bad performer on pressure but you see that is the way of playing is different when he has a, that pressure and Eustachio it yeah. will be a more a safe option uh, as a captain uh Nilton a lot of fun uh you have a prediction for me for uh, Canada versus uh, Trinidad and Tobago Saturday night uh the easy prediction will see it's it's a, it's a good win of three nil <laughs> but with Canada you never know but when you see that 23 squad of uh, Trinidad you you have to be expecting uh, an easy win if it's if it's not an easy win for Canada it will be long months long 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 months for Biela, yeah. for the federation and for the players too so uh, I'll go for a 3-0 I want to finish this podcast sending out condolences. It's been a very, very sad week in Italy. It's been a very, very sad week uh, in the United States and in Brooklyn, New York in particular. Uh, Joe Barone, who was uh, born in Sicily and left at the age of eight with his family and made their way to Brooklyn, um, used to um, um, work with Rocco Comiso. Uh, who years ago bought ACF Fiorentina. And uh, Comiso nominated Joe Barone to general manager of Fiorentina. Joe Barone oversaw the building and construction um, of Viola Park, which today is, um, is known as one of the, um, regarded as one of the best training facilities in the world, where ACF Fiorentina um trains their academy teams train boys girls uh it's something absolutely special uh, fiorentina had a game on the weekend on the road at atalanta uh where joe barone suffered a heart attack at the hotel before the game uh the teams got together they discussed it they chose to postpone the game which they did uh he was rushed to hospital uh, and uh, and uh, he had um, uh, heart surgery, uh, and he was in very, very critical condition for a couple of days thereafter, put on life support uh, until his family could make their way down uh, um, to, um, to the hospital uh, and go say goodbye. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, Joe Barone passed away a couple of days ago, one day before his 58th birthday. Uh, it's been extremely sad images outside the hospital, um, extremely sad images uh, in Florence, outside of Viola Park, where uh, he's been honored by, he touched so many people. A, a gentleman shared a story the other day. Uh, he said that he was in a restaurant uh, next to the Viola Park, and Joe Barone was there, and he didn't know him. And Joe Barone went up to him. Uh, this was about a month ago. Uh, noticed that the gentleman was physically not at 100% and said, can I, can I ask you uh, physically um, what, uh, uh, what you're going through? And the gentleman said, I, I had suffered a stroke, and that's why I'm, you know, I, I've lost a lot of my ability. And, um, and um, um, Joe Barone said, um, I, I'd love for you to be able to... Uh, come watch a game one day and left him his cell phone number. Uh, and uh, the gentleman said that when he left the restaurant, he was told that the bill was taken care of already by Joe Barone. Uh, he's a guy who was in charge of the Brooklyn Italians and brought that club to another level uh, and uh, had done some great things with Fiorentina. All of Italy is crying. Like I've never met this gentleman before. Uh, I know of him, obviously. Uh, but uh, just you read everything. I always wanted to meet him and never had the opportunity to do so. And um, they're gonna they're gonna have his funeral on um, and ceremonies on Monday and Tuesday in Brooklyn. So all clubs around the world have sent their sympathies. So to mm -hmm. uh, family and friends of Joe Barone, uh, 57 years of age, uh, way too young. Uh, may he rest in peace. All right. Okay. Uh, it looks like we'll be back again. I believe on uh, Monday. Uh, once again, it could be en français on Monday. We'll see with who. 
Patrice Bernier for sure. Ali Gerba, yeah, maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe even Milton George en français. Pourquoi pas? All right. Why not? Once again, congratulations to uh, Matteo Scavoni. Uh, signed to a contract by CF Montreal, uh, formerly with uh, the Bologna uh, Primavera team, uh, will be transferred to CF Montreal and then from there loaned out to Forge FC, where he's already been there for the last week, by the way. I don't believe he's trained because he's been waiting for the paperwork. And um, Alessandro um, Biello, uh, who uh, will remain with uh, CF Montreal for the entire season. Uh, that's it for us. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Nilton, merci beaucoup. We'll talk to you again soon. See you next week. All right. Go Canada Go versus Trinidad and Tobago. Big game on Saturday night, and CF Montreal will play their next game on Saturday, March 30th at DC United. To Agnello, Sammy, Juliana, and Master Control, thank you very much. They're Cavallaro. A marinero. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast CF Montreal Talk on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. <laughs>